Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our virtual Mishtaburah here. We're holding a Mishtaburah Chalik Aleph, and we will be learning today, Mirza Hashem, the rest of Lamed Hay Amid Aleph. We didn't finish the page yesterday, as well as Lamed Hay Amid Beis. We are continuing to learn Hilchas Tfilin. We pick up today on Lamed Hay Amid Aleph, Simen Chaf Hay, and we are at the tail end of Sif Yud Beis. So with three lines down in the Shulchan Harach and Lamed Hay Amid Aleph, near the beginning of the line, the word in the Mechaber Mutter, says the Mechaber, Mutter levarech al tefillin she'ulin. You are allowed to make a bracha on borrowed tefillin. There's no requirement of lochem by tefillin. By tzitzitz, we saw that there is a requirement of lochem. The tzitzit strings have to belong to you. The talus has to belong to you. So there is a requirement of lochem by tzitzitz. However, by tefillin, there is no such requirement. Mutter levarech al tefillin she'ulin. Veloi al gezulin. However, you are not allowed to make a bracha on stolen tefillin. Says the Mishnah Baruch Katan and Gimel Shaulim. You're allowed to make a bracha and use borrowed tefillin. Says the Chavetz Chaim. Vafil b'shoyel shaloi midas muter. You're even allowed to borrow, use, and make a bracha on tefillin that you're borrowing without the knowledge of the owner. Why is that? This is because of a concept that we've seen already many times throughout the Mishnah Baruch. Because it is good for a person. A person is happy. He is willing and he is happy if a mitzvah is being done with his property. However, says the Mishnah you should take care to wind the tefillin up the way they were when you found them. And you should also not take them away from the place where you found them. Kemai Batalis, similar to what we learned by Atalis, Lael Basivin Yodalad, earlier in Sivin Yodalad, Siv Dalad, Ayin Shum. So you cannot take the Twilin from the Besak Nesses and bring them to your house, or take them from the owner's house and bring them to the Besak Nesses, or from one shul to another shul. If you find yourself in a situation where you do have to use a borrowed pair of Twilin without the knowledge of the owner, you have to use them where you find them. Ice cut and Nundalad. Gizulim. You cannot make a bracha on stolen tefillin. Why? Says the Mishtabura, and he brings this down from the Magen Avram. Tahavale mitzvah baba avera. Here you have a problem of mitzvah baba avera. You're trying to accomplish a mitzvah, but it's coming through the agency of an avera. The only reason you have these tefillin is because they were stolen. You cannot accomplish a mitzvah through gizela, through an avera. Vafilo achayush. And this is true even if the owners were already Mayayish. So Ruvain Chasvachalilo stole Twillin from Shimon. Shimon already said, Vaili Luchasar and Kiss. He gave up on ever seeing his Twillin again. He knows that they were stolen. Sometimes, like by an Aveda, we know if somebody was Mayayish on an Aveda, somebody lost something and he was Mayayish, we know that there are times that then the one who finds it is allowed to keep it. Yish is not Kaina, by Gzela, for sure not. If somebody stole something and the owner is Mayayish, the thief is not kinded. So even after Yish HaBailim, still you cannot be Yoytze the Mitzvah and you can't make the bracha on stolen film. It says the Chavetz Chaim, V'afilu b'dieved, even post facto, loy kia mitzvah tefillin. If somebody did put on stolen film, he was not mekayim the Mitzvah. Ach, however, imachar ha-tefillin la'achar Yish la'achar. Let's say Ruvain stole chas v'chalilo a pair of tefillin from Shimon, and Shimon was Miyayish. Now, following Shimon's Yish, Ruvain took the Twilin and sold them to Levi. It's the opinion of the Magan Avram over there. Levi would be able to make a bracha. Again, what's the case over here? Ruvain Chas Chalila stole a pair of Twilin from Shimon. Okay, Ruvain has these stolen tefillin. Shimon is Miyayish. This doesn't help Ruvain. Ruvain still cannot use these tefillin. He can't make a bracha on these tefillin. They're stolen tefillin. It's Ritzah Baba Avera. But the owner, Shimon, was already Miyayish. Now Ruvain takes the tefillin and sells them to Levi. Now you have Shini Rishus. You have a change of ownership because Ruvain sold them to Shimon. And that Shini Rishus is taking place subsequent to the owner's Yish. So you have Yish 
followed by Shini Rishus. When you have Yish followed by Shini Rishus, then the one who buys it, Levi, the purchaser, is kind of the stolen object. So now Levi actually owns these Tfilin. He was he bought them, he purchased them, and he did acquire them because of Yish and Shini Rishus, the combination of both, but specifically the Shini Rishus has to be subsequent to the Yish. Okay. However, the Taz and the Gra take issue with this, and they write the Bechol Gavni In all cases, when you have stolen tefillin, it would be also to make a bracha. After even though the Gra says that in the case that we just described, Levi would be yoitz the mitzvah with those tefillin, but he still cannot make a bracha. Why? Because it's still forbidden to make a bracha on such trillin. Mishom, because of the pasuk in Tehillim, if a robber, if a thief makes a bracha, niates Hashem. It is as if he is chasvalila cursing the rabbi Nishalalim. When a robber, when a thief makes a bracha, so what's he doing? He's taking stolen trillin. And he's making a bracha. Whoa, thank you, Rabbi Nishalaylam, for giving me the mitzvah. I'm going to go, I'm doing such a holy thing. I'm going to go be Mekayim a mitzvah. With what? With stolen property. That's by Tzayah Berech Nyeit Hashem. And that, says the Gra, and apparently also the Taz, that goes even on Levi. Even though Levi really acquires the Tvilin, because he has Shina Rishos and Yish, still there's an Indian of Tzayah Berech. Why? Explains the Chavetz Chaim, because through, by virtue of Levi's purchase of the Trillin, it is the purchase of Levi that is actually removing the stolen item from the ownership of Shimon. Remember, Shimon was the original owner. Ruvain stole the Trillin from Shimon. Ruvain doesn't acquire the Trillin. So right now, when the Trillin are in the hands of Ruvain, even after Shimon's Yish, the Tfilin still have not left the ownership of Shimon. They're still owned by Shimon. But now when Levi purchases the Tfilin from Ruvain, subsequent to Shimon's Yish, now the Tfilin are actually going to change ownership from Shimon to Levi. So it's Levi's purchase that actually removes the Tfilin from the ownership of Shimon. And therefore there's still an Indian of Baitseya Berach, he is, is still, in a sense, the robber. He's the one who's actually taking ownership away from Shimon and transferring it to himself. Ah, however, if Levi would now go ahead and sell them to Yehuda, nearer the Yuchal of Arich, the Chavetz Chaim says it would seem that Yehuda would be allowed to make a bracha. Why? Because Yehuda is not furthering the Gzela on these Trillin in any way. Ruvain, he was the thief. Levi, it's his purchase that removed, that took away the bilus of Shimon and transferred it to Levi. If Yehuda now buys it, he's not furthering the Gzela. The Tfilin are already removed from the ownership of Shimon. Yehuda is not removing that ownership anymore from Shimon. All he's doing is transferring it from Levi to himself. But he's not furthering the Gzela, and therefore there would be no Indian of Beitzea Berach. Cain, Matsasi, Bedamesek, Eliezer, Le'el, Besimon, Yedalov, Ayn Sham, Chavaz Chaim says he gathered this from the Damesek Eliezer earlier in the Hilchas Tzitzis in Simon Yud Aleph. Okay, now we go on to Sif Yud Gimel. Says the Machaber, three lines from the bottom near the end of the line. Nagu ha'olam shaloy lachloit tfilin ad akar kedushas uvalot siyoyim. When is the proper time to remove tefillin? Says the Mechaber, the velt is noyeg. Na'agu ha'olam. Shaloy lachleitz tefillin, not to remove tefillin. Until when? Ad achar kedushas uvalotziyayin. Until after kedusha de sidra. Until after we say the kedusha that we have in the beginning of uvalotziyayin. So says the Mechaber. Says the Mishnabura, ais katn nun hei. Na'agu ha'olam. Says the Chavetz Chaim. V'yesh, and there are those, and he brings this down from the Mangan Avram, V'yesh she'ein mashen aleim yoysem and achiv. Says the Chavetz Chaim, from the name of the Mangan Avram, you should know that there are those who are very careful not to wear the tefillin any more than they're mechuyiv to wear them. Why? Tzvich and gufnaki, 
because we know that tefillin require a guf naki. You're not allowed to be mafiach. You're not allowed to pass gas while wearing tefillin. And therefore, they're very afraid that this might happen. And that would be not by kavadik for the tefillin. So they don't want to wear the tefillin more than they have to. Says the Chavetz Chaim, It depends on the individual person. If a person has gastrointestinal issues, and he is worried that he might come to pass gas while he's wearing the tefillin, then certainly, says the Chavetz Chaim, such a person should take off the tefillin immediately, as soon as he can. And this is why most people do not wear tefillin all day. Let's remember, tefillin are not something that, it, that really are supposed to be reserved for davening. Really, we should be wearing tefillin all day. Why don't we wear tefillin all day? Because of the problem of guf naki. We have the requirement of a guf naki. Also, we're going to see you're not supposed to be misyach das from the tefillin. Certainly, you don't want to be busy with certain divrei chayel, etc., etc., while you're wearing tefillin. So, we don't have the ability to wear tefillin all day. Chavetz Chaim says, it is written in the name of the Ariyah Kadosh, that he did not take off the tefillin until after Aleinu. On the day when there's a bris mila in shul, it is proper not to take off the tefillin until after the bris mila. Why? Because mila is called an ice, it's called a sign. And since the tefillin and the mila are both considered an ice, we wear the tefillin while we are engaged in the ice of mila. Now this is actually very interesting because this is something where we find sort of a stira. We're saying over here that we should wear the tefillin during the mila. Why? Because mila is an ice and the tefillin are an ice. At the same time, we're also going to see that one of the reasons you don't wear um, tefillin on Yom Tov is because Yom Tov is an ice and tefillin are an ice. And therefore, there's no reason to wear the tefillin on Yom Tov because you don't need the ice of tefillin on Yom Tov. You have the ice of Yom Tov. Over here, we're saying, oh, Mila, Mila is an ice. Make sure to wear the tefillin by, by the Mila because they're both an ice. Seems a little bit contradictory. This is the subject of Dishu footnote number 66, where it says over here, Even though on Shabbos and Yom Tov, we say that you're potter from Tefillin because you don't require the ice of Tefillin. You have the Tefillin of the Shabbos, you have the ice of Shabbos and Yom Tov. It would actually be, actually be a zilzal in Shabbos and Yom Tov to have the ice of tefillin. It's as if you're denigrating the ice of Shabbos and Yom Tov and saying that you still require the ice of tefillin. Following that logic, it would seem that really you should take the tefillin off before the milah. Beer Shal Sachuva Sigris Moshe, the Rishiva Zatzal Rav Moshe says in the Igris, Sheha Ois, Enoi Maisa Hamila. When we say that Mila is an ice, what does that mean that Mila is an ice? It's not the Maisa Mila, it's not the cutting that the Moil does that is an ice. Elamashahu Mohol, the fact that a person is Gemalt, the fact that the man has a bris Mila, that's the ice. Therefore, it is proper that the father should bring the tinoik into the bris mila while he's wearing tefillin. Adarabba says to Yeshiva Zatzal, the, the, the reason you bring the rachanimal, he's not a rachanimal yet, right now he's a tinoik that's not, doesn't have a mila yet. You bring him into the mitzvah of Mila while you're wearing tefillin in order to show why are we doing a bris Mila now? Because it's an ice. See, I'm wearing tefillin. Tefillin is an ice. That's why we're doing Mila now. To show that what we're doing now is we're making an ice. 
Very, very fascinating. You see how you could learn something and you don't understand what's really behind it. Like this, you would learn, oh, yeah, we have to wear the twillin by the mila because this is an ice and that's an ice. Oh, very appropriate. The problem is we see later that it's not appropriate. Shabbos is an ice. Twillin is an ice. Yom Tov is an ice. Twillin is an ice. So we don't wear twillin on Shabbos and Yom Tov. Now explains Rav Moshe, no, you have the wrong perspective. It's not shot that you wear the ice of the tefillin by the mila because this is an ice and that's an ice. The, the reason you wear it is to show what, why we're doing what we're doing. We're about to make a bris mila, which is an ice. We have to announce that to the world. How do we do it? By keeping the tefillin on our head and showing everybody we are engaged now in creating an ice, in doing bris mila to create an ice on this tinoik. Okay. Now we go weiter. Says the Ramah, two lines from the bottom in the Shulchan Aruch. So we had the Mechaber. The Mechaber said that the Velt is naive not to take off the Tefillin until after Kedusha de Sidra, until after the Kedusha of Uval Etzion. Says the Ramah, V'yesh misha kosav al Kabbalah. There are those that say, based on Kabbalah, that you should not take off the tefillin until if you have until you have completed reciting kedusha three times shalosh kedushais va'arba kadeshim and four times kaddish. Now in the Mishnah we're going to see that the Mishnah feels there's a typo here. There's a mistake in the text of the Ramah. He's going to flip it. To Arba Kedushais and Shalosh Kedeshim, and he'll explain what we mean by four times Kedusha and three Kadeshim. And then the Ramah says, Kadish Yosaim. This means until, not to take off the Tefillin until after the final Kadish Yosaim at the end of Davening. And the Ramah says that those that are Medaktik B'mitzvahs, this is the way they are Noyeg. He brings this down from the Sefer Pesach Ha'inayim. Okay, let's see the Mishnah Says the Mishnah is cut in nun vav. Shalosh Kedushos. Says the Chavetz Chaim, Taz Seiferhu. There's a typo here, there's a mistake in the text. Ube emes tzarek loimah, really it should say, Shalosh Kedushim, three times Kadesh, va'arba Kedushos, and four times Kedusha. Where do we have four times Kedusha in Davidim? Explains the Chavetz Chaim, Ki baruchu es Hashem nechshav chada, Baruch Hu is considered a Kedusha. Shehi Davar Sheba Kedusha. Baruch Hu is not Kedusha as we know it. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh Hashem Tzvaka, Yisvalach Alaretz Kevaydai. But it is called Kedusha because it is certainly a Davar Sheba Kedusha. U Kedusha Safa Verura Shniya. So Baruch Hu is the first Kedusha. The Kedusha that we say in Berchus Kriyashma, that the Chavetz Chaim refers to as Kedusha Safa Verura, Right? We say, Besafa, Verura, Uveni'ima, Kedusha, Kulam, Ke'echad, Einim, Ve'imrim, Be'yira, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. That's the second Kedusha. U Kedusha, Sa'amida, and then what we regularly call Kedusha, the Kedusha of Chazar HaShatz. U Kedusha, Suvalotziyayin, and then the Kedusha, the Sidra, the Kedusha of Uvalotziyayin. So there we have four Kedushas. What are the three Kadeshim? U Shloisha, Kadeshim, Hu, Chatsi, Kadesh, Ekoidim, Baruch, Hu, the Chatsi Kadesh after Yishtabach. The Chatsi Kadesh Shaka Tfilish Moina Esrei. Right? The Chatsi Kadesh that we have in between Tachanun and either Kriya Satora or Tachanun and Ashrei of Olotzion. The Kadesh Shalom Shaka of Olotzion. And the third one is the Kadesh Shalom after Uvolotzion. Nevertheless, Mashmi mi prima godim ushari achreinim de me mekaimish and hagim loimer kadish yasa bechayam achar aleinu. In places where we have the minig to recite a kadish yasim at the close of Davin and Gifter Aleinu, Taiv, it would be good, Shaloi Lachlait at Akar Kadish Yasim until after Kadish Yasim. Why? Because of the Ramah. The Ramah said, the Hainullah Akar Kadish Yasim. So that's the Kadish Yasim at the end of Davin. Now, I, I just like to point out when we learn this halacha. The end of davening. You know, the end of davening is one of those uh, special times. Uh, I find that there are some very significant times and very significant places when it comes to davening. A significant place when it comes to davening is the back of the shul 
or the back of the Besmedrish. We could write a Sefer about the back of the Shul and the back of the Beis HaMedrish. Sometimes what goes on in the back. The back is a dangerous place very often. But there's also special times during davening. One is the end of davening. A lot of people are in a rush. They're in a rush to get out of davening. They, they, they got to go. They got to get out. I like to say, unfortunately, there are some people who come to shul to leave. But there are some people that are in a rush to get out. And, you know, some people will listen to this year and they'll say, well, yes, Rabbi Weiss. There are people that are in a rush because they have to get to work on time. They have to get to work on time. They have to catch the train. They have to catch the bus. The Rishir Zatzal of Moshe used to look at people who are running out at the end of davening, and he used to say, I don't understand. They're trying to save time. That's not their time. It's the Rabbi Nishalolam's time. Davening is a time that is set aside for Avodah Hashem. The time period of davening is the Rabbi Nishalolam's time. Now you're worried that you need time. The Rabbi Nishalolam is the one that has the time. The Rabbi Nishalolam is the one who created time, and the Rabbi Nishalolam is the one who can give you time. And the Rabbi Nishalolam can give you time. There are a million ways that the Rabbi Nishalolam could give you time. The Rabbi Hashem could give you time so that when you get in your car, you won't have any traffic. The Rabbi Hashem could give you time that the trains and the buses will run on schedule. The Rabbi Hashem could give you time and suddenly you're going to find out that somehow the trip took less time than it should have. The Rabbi Hashem could give you time that you thought you had to be there for a 9 o'clock meeting and you're going to show up and you're going to find out that the meeting was postponed. The Rabbi Hashem could give you time that you had to go to a medical visit and you went to the office and there was nobody in the waiting room. There are so many ways the Rabbi Hashem could give you time. Don't be quick to take time away from the Rabbi Nishalom. We all remember, uh, all, it's already a lot of years, there are a lot of us that don't remember, they didn't experience it. But I remember very well on 9-11, the people whose lives were saved because it was Yemei HaSlichais and Davening took longer than usual. So they got on to the next train or the next car, but whatever it is, they got to work late that day. I myself I have to give Shavach Vahidot to the Rabbeinu Shalom. Whenever I mention it, I was supposed to drop my wife off at the World Trade Center that morning on 9 11. I was supposed to drop her off. I usually would have dropped her off, those of you who know the area, the corner of West and Liberty. There used to be an Edison Park Fest right over there at the foot of one of the pedestrian bridges going over West Street over to the World Financial Center. I used to drop her off at 10 to 9 on a day that I drove her to work, and that was a day that the plan was I was supposed to drive her to work that morning. But it happens to be that the yeshiva that my children went to at that point, they had parent-teachers conferences the night before, and we stayed all the way till the end of parent-teachers conferences because we gave one of the teachers who couldn't drive at night, we gave her a ride home from New Jersey to Staten Island, and we missed the Adderbridge crossing. They were doing a construction on the Adderbridge, and we got to the Adderbridge crossing right when they closed it. They turned us around. I had to get onto the turnpike. They had to turnpike around to the Gothels. And to make a long story short, we didn't get home until almost 2 o'clock in the morning. My wife said, I'm not going into the office tomorrow. I'm going to work from home tomorrow. It was before COVID. We're not, I'm not going into the office. I'm going to work from home. She worked from home, and because of that, she was not there. But that's the, the Rabbi Hashem can give you time. The Rabbi, that's the only one who can give you time. So don't be quick to take time away from the Rabbi Nishalom. Okay, let's go back into the Mishnaburah here. We're a nice cut and involve with three lines off the bottom of the Mishnaburah. says the Chavetz Chaim. Those who are, who customarily, doesn't mean a minig as in like minig Yisrael din. This is, this is what they do. The people who customarily, they, they are in the custom of to fold up their talus and to roll up their tefillin and to put them away in their bags in middle of Kaddish. Says the Chavetz Chaim, and he's not saying this on his own. Well, maybe he is. He, say, he is saying it on his own in the Shari Tzion. He says, Kain nira li pashit. It seems obvious to him. Loi yafa hein oisin. Says the Chavetz Chaim, what they're doing is not nice. What they're doing is not proper. Dema'oid yesh l'chavein ba'anias amein yehesh me'raba. It is very important to have serious kavana when you say amein yehesh me'raba. 
Kamavur la kaman besif nun vav, like we're going to see later on in Simon nun vav, betur u bishulchan arich. Va'amein yeheshme rabba, hu oid be madrega gavoya, amein yeheshme rabba is on a higher madrega, mi kedusha. It's more kadosh than the kedusha. Kadosh, 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 Hashem tzvakais. It's more kadosh, amein yeheshme rabba has more kedusha to it than the kedusha that's recited by the malachim. Kemavur sham be magen Avram sif katan alif u be vaday loy gara mishar bracha ister abanan and it's certainly not less than a regular bracha which is a derabanan da asalasa is afilu tashmish kal bishashu mavarech you're not allowed to be busy doing something while you make a bracha kemavur lekaman be simin kuf tzadik alif be magen Avram sif katan beis so the chavetz chaim does not like the idea. That people will be busy rolling up their ta- with their tefillin or folding up their talis in middle of kaddish. You're li- you should be listening to kaddish, paying attention, having kavana, especially by amen yeheshme rabba. Okay, now we're on lamed hey on beis, and let's go weiter in the mechaber. We're continuing to discuss when it's proper to take off the tefillin. So so far we had the mechaber who said that the Velt is knowing not to take off the Tefillin until after Kedusha de Sidra, after the Kedusha of Uvalutzion. We had the Ramah. The Ramah said four times Kedusha, Baruchu, Kedusha of Chazar Sashatz, I'm sorry, Kedusha of Berches Kriyishma, Kedusha of Chazar Sashatz, and Kedusha of Uvalutzion, and then three Kadeshim, Kadesh after Yishtabach, Kadesh after Tachdun, and Kaddish Shalem after Uval Tzion, and preferably even after Kaddish Yosem after Aleinu. Now says the Mechaber, Uviyoyim sheyesh by Sefer Torah, on a day when we're going to take out the Sefer Torah and we're going to lane, Nayhagim the minigish shaloy lechalt some not to take off the tefillin, ad sheyachaziru Sefer Torah, until they return the Sefer Torah, v'yanichu bahechal, and put it back into the Aron Kaddish. Now, we all know that Nusach Ashkenaz puts back the Sefer Torah right after Kriyas HaTorah. So those who daven Nusach Ashkenaz look at this Mechaber and they say, wait a second, the Mechaber already told me I shouldn't take off the Tefillin until after Uval Tzion. Uval Tzion is after we put back the Sefer Torah. So why is he telling me now that when there's laning, I should make sure to wear it until after I put away the Sefer Torah? I have to do that anyway because I have to wait until after Uval Tzion. The answer is that the Mechaber is going according to the Minig of Svard. He was, uh, he was a Svardi, uh, Eidot HaMizrach, right? So their Minig is to put away the Sefer Torah after Ashrei Uvalutzian. So now the Mechaber is saying where normally on a regular day you could put away the Tefillin right after the Kedusha of Uvalutzian, but on a day when there's laning, you should wait all the way till after Revol until after you put away the Sefer Torah. Now says the Ramah, how about according to our minik? Now says the Ramah, Haga, V'hainu b'mokayim shem achdisem ha-Torah la'achar Revol Gael. This Mechaber is going according to the minik where they would put away the Sefer Torah after Revol Tzion. Avol afi minik medina se'elu, but according to the minik of these regions, minik Ashkenaz, when we put away the Sefer Torah right after Kriya Satayra, then this halacha of the Mechaber does not come into play. Then you should make sure not to put away the Sefer Torah until after Uval Tzion, like all other days. Says the Mishnabura, Nun Zayin, why is it that you shouldn't put away the Sefer Torah? Why, now, why is it that you shouldn't take off the tefillin until after the Sefer Torah is put away? Ad she'yachaziru. Remez Ladavari says that we have a hint to this in a Pasuk in Micha, where the Pasuk says, Vayavar Malkam Lufnehem, their Melech will go before them, Hainu Sefer Torah. The Melech is a reference to the Sefer Torah. Vahashem Beroisham. And the name of Hashem will be on their heads, that's the tefillin. And this is brought down by the Beis Yosef. 
Ais katan nuches, we put back to save the Torah. The yanichu beheichala, put it back in the yard kaidish. Vacholz and kaidim. If somebody does have to take off his tefillin before they put back to save the Torah, al kalpanim yizaher, he should at least take care. Shelo yachleitz hashel roish bifnei save the Torah that he should not take off the shel roish while standing facing the save the Torah. Why? Because sometimes when you take off the Tzolon Shal Rosh, you inadvertently uncover your head. You should not uncover your head uh, facing the Sefer Torah. That's not a Kavadik. Rather, you should turn to the side. When it comes to taking off the Shal Yad, where you're not uncovering yourself in an improper manner, or if you could take off <coughs> the Shal Rosh, while it is still underneath the Talas Gadol, Shari, that would be okay. There would be no problem with that. Now we go weiter. Weiter in the Mechaber, three lines down, right by the end of the line. Biyayim Rosh Chaydish. On Rosh Chaydish, I'm recording this year on Monday. Tomorrow is Rosh Chaydish. Tonight is Rosh Chaydish. Rosh Chaydish Sivan. Biyayim Rosh Chaydish. On Rosh Chaydish. We take off the tefillin before Musaf. Says the Ramah Haga, for who adin b'chalamayit, the same halacha would apply in chalamayit. We take off the tefillin before Musaf. V'dafka, and this is very fascinating. V'dafka b'makayim sh'aimri mu Musaf kedushas keser. These two halachas, the idea that we take off the tefillin before Musaf on Rishchidosh and before Musaf on chalamayit. That's only, says Drama, in places where the minig is to say keser for the Kedusha by Mosef, as opposed to Na'aritzcha and Agdishcha, or opposed to Nikadesh Shemcha Ba'olam. So Nusach Sfarad, Nusach Sfarad typically says keser by Mosef, even on Rish Chaydish and So then the Ramah says, that's when this halacha applies. And the Mishnah is going to explain why. Because if we say Kedusha's keser, we're praising the Rabbi Nishalolam, and we're saying, Keser yitnu lecha, Hashem aleikeinu. We give a keser, we give a crown to you. But if we're wearing tefillin, we're wearing a crown. And that sort of takes away from the shvach that we're giving to the Rabbi Nishalolam. You're telling the Rabbi Nishalolam, you're going to give him a crown while you're wearing a crown. So what are you doing? You're telling the Rabbi Nishalolam, yeah, don't worry, we'll give you one too. That's not very much of a shvach. So we take the keser off our heads before we say that we're going to give the Rabbi Nishalolam a keser. Now, of course, this begs the obvious question. If this is only Negea, when we say Kedusha's Keser, why is this the widespread meaning even by Nusach Ashkenaz to take off the Tefillin before Mosef on Rishchidosh and Chalamayit? So closes off the Ramah. The Ramah ends off the Simon by saying, Miu, however, Nayhagim l'salkam kaidem Mosef b'chamakayim. The meaning has become to take off the Tefillin before Mosef everywhere. Now let's take a look here at the Mishnabura. Says the Mishnabura, Ice Katan Nun Tes. The Mechaber said that on Rosh Chaydish, we take off the Tefillin before Musaf. Ah, when do we take them off? Achar Shehechaziru Asefer Torah Bahechal. We take off the Tefillin after we put the Sefer Torah back. Now, that would make sense in the Nusach Svard world, where again, they take off, they, they put the Sefer Torah back after Ashrei. Before Musaf. Says the Mishnabura, Uvimemakaymai Seinu, Shemachdisim Tekaf Acharakriya, but in our regions where we dive in Nusach Ashkenaz and we put the Sevet Torah back right after Kriya Satorah before Ashrei, Yechalt saying we should take off the Trillin, Achara Kaddish Akadim Trillus Musaf, after Kaddish right before Musaf. So we would finish Kriya Satorah, put back the Sevet Torah, say Ashrei Valtzian, Kaddish, and only then. Do we take off the tefillin? Umeel Yerabah Kosav, the El Yerabah writes, the Rosh Chodesh on Rosh Chodesh, Yachloitz Achar Kedusha Suvalutziyayin, we should take off the tefillin after Kedusha in Uvalutziyayin, Kaidem Sha'imeri Hirothin Milfanecha, Shenishmar Chukecha, Valayamtid Milachaltzeim at Achar Kaddish, we shouldn't wait until after the Kaddish, Kedesha Lahafsik Ben Kaddish Lahatvila, because he didn't want that there should be a Hefsik between the Kaddish that's after Uvalutziyayin and the beginning of Musaf. Even though that Kaddish really doesn't go on 
the Shemayna Esri of Musaf, that Kaddish really goes on Ashri of Olutzian and on Kriya Sat, uh, uh, and not really on Kriya Satayra. It goes really on Ashri of Olutzian. Still, we don't want to make a hefsik between Kedusha, between Kaddish and the Shemayna Esri of Musaf. One reason is Kedelismaich Geula Latvila. Kaddish speaks about Geula, right? We're talking about the Geula Shlema. So we don't want to be mafsik between Geula and Tvila, and therefore we take off the Tvilin, the El Yerabba suggests, take off the Tvilin before the Kaddish. Our meaning is to take off the Tvilin after the Kaddish, but if you notice, we're in a rush. Right? We don't give the tzibur enough time, really, to go wind up the tefillin and put them away. No, take off the tefillin and they give a clap and we start Shemayin Esri right away. And again, that's in order to be memayit, the hefsik between the Kaddish and the Shemayin Esri of Musaf. Ice cut and samech v'hu adin b'chal Just like on Rishchidosh, we take off the tefillin before Musaf, so to on chal ha-mayit. V'achreinim kastu, the achreinim, right? Kevin diyesh oimrim shaloi lohan yach klal. Since there are those who rule that we should not put on tefillin on chalamayit at all, kiddle kaman b'sim and lamed aleph sif beis, like we're going to see soon, shortly in sim and lamed aleph, yemar lechaltzon kaidem halel. We should actually those who have the minig to wear tefillin on chalamayit should take the tefillin off after halel. They shouldn't wait until right before Musaf. Vashliach tzibur acher halel. The shliach tzibur. It's difficult for him to take off his tefillin before halel. He has to go straight uh, from. Chazar Sashat straight into Halal, so he should take them off after Halal. But on Chalamayit Sukkis, Sheyesh Pnai with his time, because after Shemayin Esri, people are going to take out their Dalad Minim. Some people are going out to the Sukkah to bench Esri in the Sukkah. So this time, so then, then even the Shlech Tzibur could take off the Tfilin before Halal. Hanai Hagen Lilbaish Kal those who have Dominic to wear tefillin all day. So now they put on their tefillin at the beginning of davening, but now we're making them take off their tefillin for Musaf. So what should they do? Says the Mishnah, Those who wear tefillin all day, They should put their tefillin on again after Musaf. And they don't have to make another bracha when they go to put the tefillin back on if when they took the tefillin off, they had in mind that they're going to put them back on after Musaf. This goes according to the Psak of the Ramah. The famous Psak of the Ramah in Sif Yud Beis was, if somebody takes off his tefillin and he has das to put them back on, so then it's as if he never took them off, and he doesn't have to make another bracha. The Ramah was chaylik on the Mechaber. The Mechaber holds, you take off your tefillin, I don't care what your das was. If you took off your tefillin, the mitzvah is over. The bracha is over, the mitzvah is over. You want to do a new ki on mitzvah, you have to make a new bracha. The Ramah said no. If you took off the tefillin having a das that you're going to put them back on, it's as if you never took them off, and you don't need a new bracha. So, that's what the Chavetz Chaim says, somebody who is tefillin all day should do on Rish Interestingly enough, he says you should not put the tefillin back on until the evening. As far as those who have the meaning to wear tefillin of Rabbeinu Tam, even somebody who wears tefillin of Rashi on Chalamayid, no Rabbeinu Tam tefillin on Chalamayid. On Rishchidosh, you could put them on after the completion of Musaf. I, or alternatively, you could put them on before Musaf. You could take off the Rashi Tvilin before of Olsiyin. Ice cut and Samachalif. The Rama said that the whole rationale for taking off the tefillin before Musaf is based on the custom to say the Kedusha of Keser instead of the Kadesh or Na'aritzcha. Says the Mishnah over here, Kedusha's Keser, Pirush, 
במקום שאנו אומרים נקדש במוסף, in the place where נוסח אשכנע says נקדש ישום לך בעולם, אומרים בקצת מקום יש כסף יתנו לך. לכן, דפור, אין נוכל לי יש אז כסף של תפילין עליו, it's not appropriate that you should be wearing the kesser of tefillin when you're proclaiming that you're going to give a kesser to the Rabbani Shalom. V'afilu beis tefillas halachash. And this isn't only during Chazar HaShas when you're going to say kesser. Since the kesser is part of tefillas Musaf, therefore tefillin now becomes inappropriate for the entire tefillas Musaf, For the shtil HaShman Esrei, for the complete Chazar HaShas, doesn't matter. It's inappropriate to the complete Tfilas Musaf. Who push it? And the Mishnah Bura says it's obvious. Dem Shachach, if you forgot, the Hischel Lehispal Bahem, and you started to daven the Shman Esri of Musaf while wearing Tfilin, Lo Yechaltse Me'emsa, you certainly should not get busy taking off the Tfilin in the middle of the Shtil Shman Esri of Musaf. Dena Rak Bin Haga, because this whole Indian not to wear the Tfilin is only based on a minig, and we don't want to distract you. And have you busy doing something in the middle of your Shman Esrei to be Mekayim this minute? Finally, the, the Ramak closed off the simon by saying, even though the whole rationale for not wearing Tfilin by Musaf or Rishchaydish and Chalamayid is based on this idea, this concept of saying Keser while wearing Tfilin, yet it has become the minute Bechal Makayim not to wear the Tfilin by Musaf. Says the Mishnah Rai's Katan Samach Beis, Taz Kosav, the Taz writes, Somebody who has the meaning not to take off the tefillin by Mosef, ain't a love Taluna. There's no complaint against him. Since he doesn't say Kesser. And uh, I think this is the Mishnah Ruhr speaking, where he says he heard about one God Ladar, that he did not take off his tefillin by Mosef. Ach! But certainly somebody who's dominating with a tzibur, and the meaning of the tzibur is to take off the tefillin, he should not change the meaning of the tzibur. Now, what is a possible explanation as to why the meaning became widespread, not to wear tefillin by Musaf, even where they don't say Kedusha of Keser? That could be because Yom Tiv is an ice. And we don't wear tefillin on Yom Tov because it's an ice. So on Chalamayid, even those who wear tefillin on Chalamayid, but when you're davening tefillas Musaf, and you're davening the karbonus of the Musve Hayoim, the karbon Musaf of the Yom Tov, so now you're being madgish Yom Tov. You're putting an emphasis on the fact that it's Yom Tov. When you're putting an emphasis on Yom Tov, it's not appropriate to be engaged in an ice other than Yom Tov, in the ice of Tefillin, because that could be seen as a way of denigrating the ice of Yom Tov. Okay? With that, we conclude the beautiful simon, simon Chavhei. It was a very enjoyable simon, but the truth is they're all enjoyable simonim. Thank you so much for joining me for Libra Taira. The Schuss of Libra Taira should be Megan against Kla Yisrael. The Rav Hashem should send Yeshua, Rufus, Parnasa, and Shadurchim to all those in need. And we should be Zaychet to see the Biaskal Tzedek. Be meher of Yamenu, Amen. Be well.